Assalamu alaikum. So now we will go through some examples of how to formulate your research question, which is the first and the most important step actually when you're really starting your clinical research project. Let's practice. So you are interested in neurosciences. You found it challenging and fun. You learned your neuroanatomy. You started building your knowledge in neurology. You want to do a research, probably to have a better CV, to get accepted in neurology training after your graduation. And you have no idea what to do. So I would assume this is a common scenario many students will face. So I hope by this exercise, we can come across one of the probably difficult challenges in research that is how to start and where to start so we all know neurology has all these different subspecialties you may know a few uh, topics about some of them you may have no idea of other topics it depends on your interest so you start to really exclude some of them because of your interest because of your knowledge or sometimes because of a chance so you will think oh I will do epilepsy as my research topic so remember we started broad and now we tackled one particular issue of that broad topic so epilepsy in neurology are we specific well we're not totally specific yet but we really now started to focus in one aspect of this broad big topic so what are the issues you may think of when you face a topic of epilepsy so you may need to understand the nature of the disease you probably want to know what are the causes of the disease uh, who develops the disease so who are at risk to develop epilepsy and uh, uh, why they develop the disease how would I diagnose epilepsy is there any available uh, a treatment uh, what is the best treatment probably and will the lifestyle of this patient be different if I understand it even further so let's think uh, of these two aspects of the disease who will develop the disease and lifestyle of these patients so again broad to a narrow and a specific aspect of this narrow issue of the topic I will tackle lifestyle of the patients of epilepsy as my research interest to be specific what is the effect of electronics on epilepsy so this is the topic I want to do my research on this is not my research question yet when I formulate my research question it should be clear focused it's somewhat complex and and it's an open-ended type of questions let's propose some uh, questions here what is the effect of electronics on epilepsy well this is a question but it is very straightforward it is very vague electronics can be cell phones laptops iPads wh what have you so we are not focus yet okay what is the effect of mobile phones on epilepsy now it's a little bit more focused I just want to understand the effect of mobile phones rather than all electronics but look is it clear yeah I want to look at the effect of mobile phones is it focused probably but it looks still to be simple and straightforward how about if I ask what is the effect of mobile phones on patients with epilepsy of course so now I don't want to look at the effect of mobile phone in epilepsy I want to look at the effect on the patient so now this is more clear this is more focused how about what is the effect of mobile phones on seizures frequency in patients with epilepsy so now I also tackled a particular aspect of the disease that is seizure frequency because epilepsy has different aspects I just want to look at seizure frequency if I ask a question like what is the effect of mobile phones on seizure frequency in adolescent patients with epilepsy so now I want to investigate a subgroup of this epilepsy patients I just want to look at adolescent patients because I think they're more likely to use mobile phones that's the reason if I say what is the effect of mobile phones on seizure frequency in adolescent patients with non lesional epilepsy and now I am really more focused I talked about an even specific type of epilepsy that is non lesional which is the epilepsy with no underlying structural lesion seen on MRI brain to make it more of an open-ended question I will formulate my question in a way such as how will mobile phones affect seizure frequency in adolescent patients with non lesional epilepsy 
I think the last question is clear, focused. It's a bit complex because I looked at mobile phones in adolescent epileptic patients who have non-lesional epilepsy. And it is a type of open-ended question. So the effect of mobile phones and seizure frequency in adolescent patients with non-lesional epilepsy. I want to apply my PICO formula. So my population is adolescent patients with non-lesional epilepsy. The intervention is the use of mobile phones. The comparison is no mobile phone use. And my outcome is seizure frequency. I hope the PICO formula now is more clear once we apply it to our example here. Now let's go through some questions and I want you to decide is it a good or a bad research question. I want to understand the hepatitis C in Saudi Arabia. So which one is a better question? So what is the prevalence of hepatitis C among healthcare workers? Versus how will the pre-employment education affect the incidence of hepatitis C following needle stick injuries among the health workers in primary health care centers in the eastern province? I would assume you will agree that the second question is better, but it's still clear, it is focused, it is complex, and it is open-ended type of questions. If I want to look at the post-operative complications following cholecystectomy, as my research interest, I proposed two questions. So the first one is, are post-cholecystectomy complications more common in secondary hospitals? Well, I mean, this is something worth thinking of if you are interested uh, in that area. But compare it to the other question, which will be formulated as, how will patients' weight influence the development of post-operative complications following cholecystectomy in women younger than 45 years of age? I would assume you will agree that the second question, as it is focused, it really looks at the effect of weight post-operatively after uh, cholecystectomy. And it is complex because it looks in women at a particular age range instead of going very vague broad. And it was an open-ended because it will really assume that I don't really know the exact effect, but I want to know how will the weight affect these complications in women post-operatively at the age younger than 45 years of age. Finally, let's look at diabetic foot and diabetes. This is a common topic. Let's propose two questions here. So how will insulin use affect the risk of developing diabetic foot? In diabetic patients older than 70 years who never use oral hypoglycemic agents well I mean this question is clear because you want to look at the insulin and diabetic foot in a particular group of patients with a particular characteristics uh, it, it looks complex and it is an open-ended question but compared to the last one what is the prevalence of diabetic foot in diabetics lacking the vascular risk factors or clinical vascular events. Here I'm also asking about the prevalence of a disease in a particular patients who are lacking vascular risk factors either clinically or biochemically for instance. So you may agree the first question is um, complex, is open-ended, but maybe it is too complicated because it really look at older patients, 70 years of age, who never use hypoglycemic agents, which is likely to be uh, difficult to find because diabetics at this age will more likely use oral hypoglycemics. So don't avoid too narrow uh, questions and don't be too simple, too vague. So I hope by these examples, you have a better idea of how to come up with a good or a better research question. So back to the hepatitis C uh, research question, if we agree that the second question is the better research question, that is, how would the pre-employment education affect the incidence of hepatitis C following a needle stick injuries among healthcare workers of the primary care centers of the Eastern province? Let's apply the PICO here. So the population is the health workers in primary care centers of the Eastern province. The intervention is the pre-employment education. I want to compare them to the same population who never received the pre-employment education. So that's my comparison group. And the outcome is the uh, presence of hepatitis C. I will measure it by positive hepatitis C antigens. So let's recap. When you come up with a good research question, you want to start broad, and then you tackle one issue of that broad topic. 
you propose few research questions and then you come up with what you think is the best research question you may apply pico formula to help you as a guide to think of what are the population what i'm doing what i'm comparing them to and what is my overall outcome last but not least very likely you won't directly put your research question in your paper although sometimes they may ask about it indirectly so you can formulate your research question indirectly in a way like the aim of the study was to evaluate the effect of mobile phones on seizure frequency in adolescent patients with non-legional epilepsy if someone reads such a statement he will think of what was your research question and how did you formulate your peak of to guide you through your process critical appraiser of a paper may occasionally look for whether the research question was stated clearly in your article and can give example of a UBC critical appraisal template that you can Google and find out yourself your research question should make your research experience easier systemic and clear and thank you very much